Hi everyone, uh, so working our way up to L'Hopital's rule, you should have seen some examples of zero over zero and infinity over infinity limits, and we're trying to come up with a new strategy for how we could find those without having to kind of just think our way through them, something a little more algebraic. Um, I have one more intermediate step. I, sh I reminded you of how to do these algebraically, so I want to make sure it's clear why we don't just do that all the time, and this is a great example. Uh, in this one, as x goes to 0, uh, e to the 0 is around 1, which means the top is going to 0, and sine of 0 is about 0, sine of 0 is 0, which means the bottom is also going to 0. So this is a 0 over 0, but there is no way whoop, that I am going to be able to simplify that algebraically. There's no factor and cancel to be done. And this is really easy to come up with, problems where you're not just going to be able to factor and cancel to fix a 0 over 0. So uh, this is just one of the strategies for working your way up to how L'Hopital's rule works. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I want to give you an, a little bit of an idea of where this comes from and that it's not just I'm making up a rule or somebody made up a rule. If you're interested in seeing what, how we prove this for an infinity over infinity or where that comes from, I'm happy to point you at it. I just don't want to throw too many of these kind of videos at you. So what we're going to do here is we're going to find the tangent line, the equation for the tangent line for both of these. So, okay, so I'm going to say f of x is e to the x minus 1, which means f prime of x, the derivative of that is just e to the x. And then I'm going to split off that g of x is 5 sine x, and g prime of x is 5 cosine x. And my goal here is to find the equation for the tangent line to each of these. And what I'm interested in is what's happening when x is near 0, which means I want the tangent line when x equals 0. So for this first one, my pen will work, I want f of 0, which is e to the 0 minus 1, 0, what we just figured out, right? When we plug in 0, we get 0. And then on the bottom, the slope is going to be f prime of 0, which is 1. For g of x, when I plug in 0, same idea. The whole reason we're trying to do a L'Hopital's rule is because both of these, the top and the bottom, both equal 0. So this is kind of an important feature, the fact that the y-intercept of the tangent line is going to be 0, or both of these points are crossing through the x-axis at the point we're interested in. Um, for the slope of the second tangent line, cosine of 0 is 1, so we're just going to get 5, which actually makes these really easy. The first one has a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 0. The second line has a slope of 5 and a y-intercept of 0. So basically what we're saying, I can even kind of draw you a rough sketch here, is uh, e to the x minus 1. So this has a horizontal asymptote at negative 1. Comes through and it crosses. Okay, so I'm going to look just at that one first. So the tangent line is y equals x. And what I want you to remember is that the whole way we get to this tangent line idea is saying that any sort of smooth curve that doesn't have weird sharp bends or things like that in it, if you zoom in far enough, it looks like a straight line. And the tangent line is that line that it looks like. So basically, if I zoomed in far enough on this picture, I would not be able to distinguish between the curve and the tangent line. They become identical when x is really close to 0. And the same idea with the 5 sine x. I drew these big. Sine, 5 sine x. So it's a pretty steep one. It's going like this. And the tangent line is y equals 5x fairly steep. If you zoom in enough, you're really close to x equals 0, the tangent line is going to be identical to the curve. You're not going to be able to distinguish between them. Uh, and in this problem, that's actually all we're interested in, right? Up here, we're interested in what happens when you're infinitely close to 0. 
So I can just swap out the equation for each of the functions with the equation for the tangent line. They should be identical. I may as well swap out for the one that's simple. So e to the x minus 1 should be identical to plain old x when I'm infinitely close to 0. And 5 sine x should be identical to 5x when I'm infinitely close to 0. And now, 0, I can cancel out an x. And it doesn't matter what x is doing at that point. I know I'm going to get 1 fifth. What I'd like you to see from this, because we're not going to do it this way every time, we basically come up with a quicker way to do this. We say, okay, well, what I just figured out really is that if um, we have a zero over zero limit, the value of the limit, how do I want to say this? The ratio of the y values is what we're looking for, e to the x minus one and five sine x. The ratio of the y values when you have a zero over zero limit is equal to the ratio of the slope. So we just figured out the slope of the top is one at the point we're interested in, the slope of the bottom is five at the point we're interested in. And it turns out that that ratio of slopes, one fifth, is exactly the same as the ratio of y values. And the reason why is what I just showed you, that whole uh, b equals zero for y equals mx plus b. So we just get m over m first slope over second slope. They're not the same then. Okay, and this is the gist of what L'Hopital's rule says. If you have a zero over zero limit, the ratio of the y values is equal to the ratio of the derivatives or slopes. Uh, again, I'm not going to walk through it with infinity over infinity. If you're interested, ask me. It's nothing that hard. You could look it up. Uh, I just want to get into actually working on problems here before I lose all of you. So, Ratio of y values, the limit of the ratio of y values is equal to the limit of the ratio of slopes. Keep that in mind.